Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Today on General Hospital, Jake discovers Danny vaping, Sam requests a favor from Drew, and Felicia speaks with Maxie about Spinelli. Drew and Carly at the Quartermains have planned a Scout birthday celebration. Drew wants to make the most of his time in the kitchen with Scout. Carly claims he can't do it if he's focused on vengeance. Drew claims he didn't even speak Nina's name, but she swears she could hear him thinking it. Sam, Jake, Danny, and Scout arrive, and Scout is ecstatic by all the balloons. Alexis soon arrives with presents, and everyone gathers in the living room. Carly and Sam are hanging out in the kitchen, and Sam notices Drew is more comfortable. Carly believes he is slowly moving past what occurred in Pentonville. Michael and Willow arrive, followed by Christina and Blaze. Danny is blown away when he meets Blaze, and he is even more overjoyed that she remembers her name. Danny goes to seek for his jacket, which he has again left someplace. Christina introduces Blaze as her girlfriend, and everyone grins and welcomes her. Alexis assists Drew in packing things in the living room after some of the children's activities have concluded and they have left for the stables. Alexis needs to talk to Drew on a sensitive subject, Nina being named publisher of The Invader. She has misgivings, but Nina claims she was fired by Crimson for personal reasons. Drew reveals he dismissed Nina for reporting them to the SEC because he no longer trusted her judgment. Alexis says it sounds like a press release, so tell him what you really think. He believes Nina is reckless, self-centered, and capable of anything, therefore Alexis should keep an eye on her. Back in the kitchen, Jake checks in with the adults and is also excited to see Blaze. Jake is stunned, so Willow advises he find Danny and tell him it's time for cake. Everyone laughs at the guy's reactions to Blaze. Sam discovers Drew thinking alone in the living room. She asks if he is okay, and he responds yes. She needed a favor, but she wasn't sure how to ask him. He realizes he hasn't been sunshine and rainbows lately, but he's trying to see the silver lining in the clouds. Sam reveals that Danny has been having a difficult time lately, and she asks if he could talk to him, because Danny trusts him and will confide in him. Drew replies he'd be delighted to. She appreciates it, and they hug. Jake goes down to the boathouse to find Danny. He sees him sitting on the ground alone and acting strangely. Danny stands up, and Jake smells something pleasant. He instantly discovers a vaporizer on the ground where Danny was seated. Jake is outraged and says they'll talk about it later, unless he was attempting to get caught. Danny asks whether he'll report him. Jake claims he would not snitch, but he's not returning it to him. Withow finds the boys fighting and wonders what's going on. They say they were just playing around. Willow says they're shooting a family photo and invites them to come on. Jake puts the vaporizer inside his back pocket. Back inside the house, Michael has a moment alone with Carly and tells her what Dante informed him about the connection between Olivia Jerome's death and the attempts on Dad's life. Carly knows, as she learned from John Cates. Michael says that he told Joss to bring Dex back to town, which Carly believes is a horrible idea. She believes Sonny will interpret this as going behind his back again. Michael claims he is assisting their father whether he likes it or not. Christina walks in and inquires, what's going on with Dad? Michael informs Christina that he hasn't heard from Dad in a while. Christina claims she was urged to summon them for cake and presents. Carly leaves, and Christina asks Michael whether Dad is okay. Michael reassures her that everything is all right. Felicia goes over Maxie's to watch the kids while her daughter works. Felicia inquires as to why Spinelli is not available, to which Maxie responds that she is sent in packing. Maxie plays her mother, explaining what Spinelli did and how he corrupted her. Felicia tells her that is not what happened and that it was her decision to have Spinelli move in with her. Maxie was already aware and she relied on her mother to respect her boundaries because it was critical that she handle her finances independently. Felicia claims she is her mother and is unable to see her struggle. 
Maxi understands as a mother and forgives her, but not Spinelli. Felicia wonders why she's so angry with Spinelli. Maxi claims he is not her parent, but Felicia insists he is family and would do anything for her. She believes Maxi would do the same thing if their roles were reversed. Maxi would, and that's the problem because she fell in love with him again, and they interfered not only with her finances, but also with her heart. Felicia never intended things to turn out this way. Maxi understands Spinelli would not lie to her out of malice, that is not her concern. What bothers her is that, aside from her and Mac, Spinelli has been the one she can rely on the most. Felicia believes that this proves he is still alive. Maxi admits that acting on her feelings for Spinelli was a mistake. She claims they've gone down this route previously, and it didn't work out. Plus, they told each other how they felt, and it all fell apart. Felicia believes she and Spinelli have always had a connection and are somewhat in love with each other. She knows Nathan and Ellie witnessed it, and Mac is still irritated by it. She believes Spinelli sees it, and Maxi now needs to see it. Maxi isn't sure what she would do if she tried again with Spinelli and lost him for forever. Felicia understands that it is a risk. Maxi believes the kids would be sad if it didn't work out. Felicia can only tell Maxi that she is a survivor. Yet, Maxi is unsure how many development experiences she can handle. Felicia notes that things may or may not work out for her and Spinelli, and she must determine whether the risk is worthwhile. Later, Maxi phones Spinelli and leaves a message for him to call her. Dante arrives at the hospital and learns from Chase, who is already there, that a man has been brought in after being assaulted on the pier, but he isn't talking or giving his identity. Dante scans the room and recognizes Selena's bodyguard. Dante questions the authorities on the scene and informs Chase that Lai was assaulted on the pier by another of Selena's men, who fled when the cops arrived, but they apprehended him. According to Dante, infighting in Selena's organization indicates that things are going to grow more dangerous. Dante confesses to Chase that this is also related to the FBI investigation John Cates is doing. Dante and Chase go in to visit Lai and question him. Dante claims they have apprehended his attacker and are certain it is another of Selena's guys. Chase claims his boss wants him dead, while Dante claims he has days, if not hours, once he walks out. Chase recommends they get him protection from the DA, but Lai only laughs. Dante informs him that he has the option of speaking or being buried in an unmarked tomb the following morning. Ava returns home as Sonny hangs off the phone. He tells her that if she has anything to ask him about, she should go ahead. Ava notes that he hasn't been forthright since his conversation with Nina. He knows Nina will tell her everything, but she can still question him. She wants him to understand that her friendship with Nina does not imply she is taking sides and she is staying out of it. He describes it as a wise decision. Spinelli arrives at Sonny's summoning, and Sonny informs him that he can speak in front of Ava. Spinelli says all systems are go for tonight. Ava wonders what happens tonight. Sonny claims he's bringing his opponent to their knees. Spinelli adds that Sonny intends to arrange a phony bridge-building summit with Selena, while he monitors everything from behind the scenes. Ava feels the enemy will just send hired guns to perform the job. Sonny is banking on it, so they will apprehend the gunman and force him to bring them to the person in command. Sonny informs Spinelli that they have completed their task and promises to keep him informed. Spinelli leaves, and Ava insists on accompanying Sonny. He loves what Aval is doing, but she isn't involved in this. Eva disagrees, believing that he will need her to make the scheme work. She claims that if they want to present this meeting as a negotiation with Selena, they will need an arbiter, and she is a former Jerome family member. Sonny confesses she is not wrong. Ava also notices that his circle of trust has shrunk, so he doesn't have to accomplish this alone. She can help him. John storms into Anna's office and demands that Sonny be removed from his life permanently, and she agrees to assist him. Anna reminds him who he is speaking to, and he apologizes. He claims he had a bad day and acted out on her. She claims that this is a pattern with him, but she apologizes for questioning his honesty the other day. 
she believes he's always been excellent friends with Robin, therefore they should get along. He says, despite Sonny, he wants them to be able to collaborate. She wants it as well. Anna informs John that Sonny is not a saint, but he is not a sadist who torments people for sport. John claims his chat with him today indicates different. Anna thinks that John is more concerned with the man Sonny was than the one he is now. She claims Sonny has been a good friend to Robin, as he was to Stone. John says that many nice people commit horrible things. Anna says she would arrest Sonny if she had evidence that he committed a crime, but he should not be reduced to a criminal. She has to consider both the good and the terrible about Sonny, and that is the only way he will bring him down one day if that is what he wants. Dante and Chase enter, and Dante has some news. He claims Sonny and Selena Wu are making advances. Dante relates what transpired with Lai, who informed them that Sonny and Selena had ordered him to leak information about a meeting scheduled for tonight. Anna said they are attempting to smoke this suspect out. Anna and John decide they need to stop this, and they all flee. At a warehouse, a worker informs Selena that everything is ready for tonight. Sonny arrives alongside Frank, Gabe, and Ava. Selena was not expecting Ava, and it was not part of the plan. Sonny says plans change, and they can trust Ava. Selena claims Sonny has an incentive to believe Ava because she is the mother of his kid, but she does not. Sonny adds that Ava will act as a go-between to make everything appear legitimate, and that they will smoke their adversary out evening. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.